bow our hearts, we bend our knees, O Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things, O Lord, we cast down our idols, give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. O oh, Spirit, come make us. Give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, oh God. God of Jacob. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Here we are on Friday already, ready to uh, celebrate the second uh, Sunday of Lent. But here we are, Friday of the first week of Lent. And one or more of these big issues that we deal with all the time that I think Lent is really, really all about for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's ask God for mercy. Most especially, let's ask Him for mercy for our anger. Lord Jesus, you call us to a life of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to a life of peace. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to a life of understanding and dialogue. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of everyone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, If the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked, says the Lord God? Do I not rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way 
that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abdominal things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this, he shall die. You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and full Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. O oh, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and full redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and full You, O Lord, mark iniquities. Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and full redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and full I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquity. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a huge statement in itself. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill. Anyone, whoever kills, be liable to judgment. But I said to you, whoever is angry with your brother, be liable to judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, 
will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says you fool will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your altar, your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge. The judge will hand you over to the guard and you'll be thrown into prison. Amen. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is an aside. I wonder if that last line is not a reference to a kind of purgatory for all of us. But anyway, here's a little story. Just as the traffic light turned green, all of a sudden, the motor in her car died. She tried to restart her car over and over and over again, but nothing worked. The guy behind her starts laying on the horn. Uh, he's telling her to get out of the way, but she tries over and over again and nothing happens. And so this guy behind her is so livid. He just lays on the horn and doesn't stop. It just blares out. And, and so she gets out of the car, walks back to this guy and says, I'd be glad to honk your horn if you'd be so kind as to start my car. Um, her cool, calm way of handling all that um, is remarkable. And I wish I handled explosive situations as well as all of that all the time, because I must confess, oftentimes maybe I don't. So today is about anger. How to deal with those explosive, difficult, difficult situations? How do we diffuse those situations? To how do I begin to diffuse those situations better myself? And one of the big problems is we make things worse by continuing uh, the 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 um, anger of the situation. A boss yells at his executive. The executive goes and yells at his secretary. The secretary goes home and yells at the kids. The kids go and kick the dog and kind of on and on it goes. So we kind of continue the anger in the situation by the way we react to it with other folks, to ourselves. And so here's what Jesus has to say about all this. Number one, I want you to imagine for a moment, going back to that, if you, if you realize there's something that needs to be reconciled with your brother, go and reconcile with him first and come back and offer your gift. I want you to imagine for a moment that uh, you live in Nazareth and you're in Jerusalem. All of a sudden you realize, oh, I got something against my brother. And you go all the way back to Nazareth and you're walking like 60 some miles, you know. Go back there, reconcile with your brother first. And you go back and, and, and make your offering at the altar in the temple. Now, what he's trying to say about all that Look how important this is to, to make such an outrageous statement. Secondly, set it with your opponent. The literal translation there means for you and I to make friends with our opponent um, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, to somehow reconcile that way. So not just to settle, but somehow to make friends in a certain way. So here we are. My response to anger can make things worse. So let's try you and I to become people of reconciliation. Let's you and I try to be people of peace. And you're saying it's impossible in certain circumstances. And maybe I might agree with you on one level, but with the grace of God, all this is impossible. Everything we do here is, is possible in somehow diffusing our anger and reconciling, making peace, even making friends with our opponent. Let me share with you something that was found on the wall of Mother Teresa's home for children in Calcutta. People were often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you're successful, you'll win, on, you'll win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you're honest and sincere, people will deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others will destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. 
The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good today anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never be enough. Give the best you have anyway. In the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. God bless you folks. Here's my question for today. This Lent, how can we improve on those situations that make our, us angry and explosive? Thanks for joining me and looking forward to seeing you this weekend. Bye-bye now.